So if you happen to walk past an author theater, it would literally sound like they're building a house up in there. And if you happen to walk inside that author theater, you'll see the human body going through some that you didn't think was humanely safe or possible. But it was still awesome to watch. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Jen's Med Life, and I'm back with another video for my surgical rotations. And this video will be on my two week orthopedic surgery rotation. Before I get started, here's a quick fun fact about UK rotations. Orthopedics in the US is spelled this way, and orthopedics in the UK is spelled this way. And also in the US, they pronounce this prefix as cepho, and in the UK, they pronounce the same prefix as kefo. So for instance, the cephalic vein is pronounced in the UK as the cephalic vein. And also in the US, cephalomedullary is pronounced in the UK as cephalomedullary. It's very interesting, huh? So what does an orthopedic surgeon do? Orthopedic surgeons are devoted to the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of disorders of the bones, the ligaments, the joints, the tendons and the muscles. So yeah, there's a lot of tapping, and there's a lot of hammering, there's a lot of drilling, and there's also a lot of cracking. It's probably the most physically taxing medical profession out there. It's like they're literally building houses every day. I mean, look at the tools they use. Yeah. So what was my day like? At 7.45, the doctors and the surgeons came together to go over the patients that they were having that day. So they triaged who needed surgery that day or who didn't. We went over their histories and imaging and discussed what type of surgery that they would perform. Then after that, some days I would round with the surgeons to see patients and then go into surgery for the rest of the day, or I would just go straight into surgery. So I observed 23 surgeries and I scrubbed into five of those. Unlike the previous subspecialties that I've completed, I tried to make sure that I only saw orthopedic surgeries this time. Side note, for every surgery that I've ever observed since day one of my rotations, I would go into the anesthetic room with the anesthesiologist and the patient, and I would watch them go over their consent. I would watch them be intubated, sedated, and prepped for surgery. So I'm getting a lot of anesthesiology experience also as I go through these subspecialties, and it's actually starting to pique my interest. All right, let's begin with surgeries that I scrubbed into. The first degree revision of a THR, which means total hip replacement. So this patient had an infected hip implant that needed to be removed and changed. It was so stuck in his femur, like the way they were hammering it out, I thought the patient's leg was gonna fly across the room. It was so forceful, but they had to get it out. Now this surgery was so messy that I had infected blood covered all over me. Like, look at this picture. Honestly, this picture doesn't do any justice because you can't see all the blood splatter, but it was everywhere. It was on my mask, it was on my scrub cap. It was everywhere, but it was so awesome. <laughs> they had actually run out of hoods that covered your whole head. Um, so I had, to wear, I had to wear a face shield instead. Ha, I will never make that mistake again. I actually assisted with quite a lot during this surgery. I assisted with holding instruments, with holding the leg, which was actually very tiring. With suction in, and I closed the patient's leg with um, simple interrupted sutures. The next one I did was a right ankle ORIF. So ORIF stands for Open Reduction in Internal Fixation. And for that one, I just assisted with holding tools and suction in. The next one was a hemiarthroplasty. I assisted with holding the instruments, suctioning, and I closed the patient's hip with a running subcuticular suture. The next one was a right toe amputation. I assisted with holding tools and suctioning, and a surgeon let me practice with the bone saw on the amputated foot. It was so cool. I also scrubbed into a left foot amputation of two toes, debridement, and washout. This patient was a non-compliant diabetic, and there was just so much pus and dead tissue in his foot. I assisted with cutting the flesh with a diathermy, pouring saline over the wound for the washout, and I was able to saw the toe, the amputated toe, and send it off for histo and micro. Surgeries I observed. So I observed another hemiarthroplasty. I saw left femur or revision, and this patient was actually awake for the surgery, 
If the patient is older, they will usually try to keep the patient awake and just administer a spinal block or spinal anesthesia. So they would be numb from the hip down. I observed a DHS, dynamic hip screws. I observed the manipulation of a distal radius plus a cast. So this was for a child that had a slipped epiphysis after the healing of a previous fracture. The child was put to sleep, but there was no real actual surgery. It was just a lot of pulling and bending. I also observed the spinal decompression of L3 and L4. This was so amazing to watch. It was so interesting and very intricate. They used a microscope for the latter half of the surgery and the surgeon let me look into the microscope to see the very fine details of the spinal cord. Y'all, this was just, I have so much respect for spinal orthopedic surgeons, seriously. I also observed a clavicle aureth. She had a commutative fracture, which basically means that her clavicle was broken into many fragments. I observed a periprosthetic aureth revision, a distal femur aureth, the removal of metalwork from a lateral epicondyle, a total knee replacement aspiration, that one was kind of boring, a second stage revision total knee replacement. Okay, this one was really cool. So after the knee replacement was done, they couldn't close her knee because she had a wound on there that made the skin over her knee very thin. So plastic surgeons came in and used part of her gastrocnemius muscle, which is the calf muscle, and they used it as a flap to cover that area of the skin that was too thin. So they opened the back side of her leg, so her, where her calf muscle is, they cut a piece of the gastrocnemius muscle, obviously avoiding vessels and arteries, they pulled it through the front of her leg and used it as a muscle flap. So once they did that, they were able to suture the incision closed and staple it too. Oh, but before they stapled it, they then took a skin graft from her thigh and then placed it on top of the muscle flap. Then they vacuum sealed the whole front of the wound. It was amazing. So I observed the humerus aureth and this patient had um, metastatic prostate cancer and we all know the first place that prostate cancer spreads to is the bone hence the fragility that caused his fracture. I observed a clavicle aureth of a simple fracture. This patient was actually in a car accident and the seat belt is what broke her clavicle. I saw a foreign body removal from the foot. I saw a left ankle aureth of a bimalleolar fracture. So bimalleolar meaning the medial and lateral malleoli were fractured. And this patient was actually walking on his broken ankles for days before he came into the hospital. I was like, WTF. Turns out he was an alcoholic, so I guess it made a little more sense. So on the first day, his ankle was too swollen to do an orif. So that day they did an external fixation. It looked like this. And then three days after the swelling went down, that's when they did the orif and they put a cast on. The other surgery I saw was an ankle orif of a trimalleolar fracture. So yes, this lady had a fracture of her medial, lateral, and posterior malleoli. I saw a hind foot debridement. So this patient had a Achilles tendon repair three years ago that had gotten infected over time because it left non-absorbable sutures in her skin. The sutures created sinus tracts and caused osteomyelitis. So sinus tracts are basically narrow openings that go from the wound that's underneath the skin to the outside world. And this is a potential space for abscess formation. And osteomyelitis is an infection of the bone. So this patient had three sinus tracts that went from her bone to the surface of her skin. So they removed the three sutures, which was actually very satisfying to watch. It looked like you know, removing ingrown hairs or something. And they took all the dead skin out and did a washout. And lastly, I saw a cephalomedullary nail fixture. This patient had a subtrochanteric fracture that extended all the way down to his femur. So procedures I performed. So I did my first female catheter placement. And if you follow me on IG and watch my stories, you already know that this was a complete fail for me. So while I was placing the lubricant into what I thought was the urethra, the male surgeon asked me, Are you sure that's the right place? I looked at him like, I think so. 
Then he says, well... You would know better than I would. Well, long story short, it was not the right place. It was actually her clitoris, and her clitoris was so small that it looked like a hole. And to make matters harder, she was um, morbidly obese, so... It was really hard to try to find the structures. It was, it was hard. I mean, I was so embarrassed. I'm here I am with a whole vagina and I still cannot find this woman's urethra. <laughs> procedures I observed. So all the procedures that I observed during these two weeks were in the anesthetic room. I saw an ultrasound guided arterial line placement. That was cool. I've seen many spinal anesthesias or spinal blocks. I've seen many intubations and over here they use something called eye gel a lot, which is just a simpler, faster and safer superglottic airway device and lastly i saw a couple of ultrasound guided interscaling nerve blocks which is used for surgeries of the clavicle or the shoulder so can i see myself doing this for the rest of my life nah and i'm actually quite surprised because i'm a big fit strong girl and i thought i would love all of the hammering and all of the strength that's used for the surgeries but I guess I can't see myself doing this all day, every day. Besides, it's filled with a whole bunch of alpha men, so you can imagine the dynamic of the OR. Yeah. One time I thought these surgeons were gonna headbutt each other because they had different views and different solutions on how to fix this person's hip. But it is an amazing profession and I have much respect for them because they ease a lot of people's pain. I especially have a lot of respect for the spine surgeons. So that was my two-week orthopedic surgery rotation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for my next video, which will be on my ITU slash ICU surgery rotation. All right, I'll see you guys then. See ya.